that. I just had the first bass come up and smack it. Boom! There's a the second one. Oh, missed him both. Third time's a charm. Come on, fish. They're all sitting right in front of that log. Right in that draw. I had two of them. Take a whack at it. That's a good sign. I saw them too, so that's even better. Nothing big, but they're fun. Didn't get the hook set. But, <clears throat> there he is. Ah, there he is. <coughs> he came up and get it that time, and that time he got stuck. That's a nice one. Nice fish coming right to me. Oh, this is a fish getting bigger. Oh, yeah, nice one. Nice, fatty, fatty, fatty. Come here, fish. Come here, fish. Man, they are fat. Look at the gut on this fish. Oh, that's a better, that's a much better fish. That's the top end of what I've been catching. Look at that big old fatty. So much fun. Thank you, bud. You made the trip worth it right there. Let's see if you got a buddy. I suspect that first one I saw was not that big, so there's going to be another one in there. Boom, there he is. Ha <laughs> ha, second cast, second fish. All right. They like this old spinner fly. That's more the size I expect down here. Oh, come here, fish. Go around circles. Get the dirt off you. There we go. Another nice little fishy fishy. All right, I wonder if there's another one in there. Look at that little fishy fishy. Goodbye. Thanks for coming. Let's see if there's a third one in there. Actually, we'll purposely throw it upstream a good bit more. I thought a coyote was in order because the way they hit spinner baits. Sure. I was really sure that what any of these flies need is a dadgum spinner. Something that makes just a little bit of noise and a little bit of flash. There we go. Is there three? Or four? Right. Let me show you how to tie a coyote. You need a spinner blade, which I've got several. I'm going to use that one right there, I think. What light's hot, isn't it? Uh, I've been having a little bit of success with these things, as you'll see in the video, or you already did see in the video. Uh, and it's a it's an answer to a question about whether or not, um, for some reason, a uh, you know, a beetle spin, spinner bait, one of these things. Uh, they work like magic on river bass. They work on a lot of fish, but beetle spin is a very inexpensive, classic uh, spinner bait. I've been around for years. Uh, let me get this set up, but it turns out that, you know, a clouser works great on the little river bass but it doesn't have much attracting power you put a little spinner blade on it and voila it makes a difference they find it and they hit it you have to work it a little differently it doesn't cast very well obviously nothing with a fly rod that weighs something going to cast very well but in the little river that i fish uh, it's a short roll cast to the other side uh, and a coyote it, it I find it's easiest to work down and across. Down and across the current because it, whatever it takes to get that spinner blade moving and the fish see it and they slam it. All right, let's get busy. Let's get started. I'm gonna tie this on my number sixes. 
Yep, here they are. I, I prefer an, a size 8, but I've got these size 6. Let me knock the hooks down so you can see that it's a size 6. These are from Green Caddis Outfitters. You can go to their website and just search Green Caddis Outfitters. They're $2.50 for 25 hooks. So what's that make them? 10 cents a piece? Something like that. My math skills ain't the best. Alright. Thread that rascal up. I'm going to use chartreuse thread. For the most part, it's just a plain old clouser. A bead chain deer hair clouser bucktail. Alright. Get that. Find my scissors and all my mess. There they are. Oh, I put them up. No wonder I couldn't find them. Alright, we're going to do this one with... I, I did the first couple of them uh, with black bead chain. I can't even pick these things up. Now we're going to use... These are large bead chain eyeballs. First thing you do is strap this on here. Uh, if you like long nose flies, you know, set it further back. If you like a short nose fly, bring it closer forward. Square them up. Latch them in real good. Grab a piece of, I got 15 pound mono. Just need a little piece of that. I need one of my swivels. Which I should have had ready already, but I didn't. Alright, well, let's pull this off. There's a plain old ordinary swivel. Not the best quality, but they'll work. Now, the monofilament is so that you can um, get good free movement in the swivel and I want this thing to be right over top of the hook point I'm gonna cut this part off I'm cutting that off why I say that stuff I don't know all right we cut that off now we got just this I've got one end of the monofilament strapped on the hook already. We run it through like this, and we run it down like this. See this? And you want to make sure there's a little tiny loop at the end. And you bleed and you latch this down. It doesn't matter if it turns a little bit on you, it won't hurt anything. I don't know how well you can see that, but. And that 15 pound test mono ain't letting that thing loose. No time soon. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it over top of the eyeballs. Both strands. And I'm going to latch them down here. And I'm going to cut them off. Right there. And there is your coyote. Believe it or not, you could leave it like this. It's a very sparse fly. But it seems kind of silly to leave it just like that. So, we are going to turn this toward me. Like this. Readjust the camera. Sorry you won't be able to see this because I'm, I'm building a clouser toward me. Because all the, all the material has to go on the hook point side. So this is the bottom of the fly. It'll, the, the spinner blade and the swivel and the bead chain eyes will make this thing run hook up if you build it right all right i need some white deer tail bucktail 
even though I doubt if this came off a buck. I mean, it probably came off a deer. A doe deer. Alright, now, generally you do not want the fibers of the hair to interfere with the spinner bait with the spinner on the tail so you make sure that that stuff ends before it gets to the tail see how it if you pull this that way it won't interfere with the spinner even though the spinner will stay down below the fly so let me turn that back up let me cut this excess off of the front of the hook bloop, bloop, and let me lash it down like I said, that might be, it, it could just as well be the only thing I put on there. So that fly would run through the water this way. See, just like that. The spinner's down behind it. The eye of the hook faces up. And this will work. But I'm going to add some gray. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the tiniest bit of flash in it. This little teeny tiny piece of flash, I'm just going to put in here, lash it on here. That's just two strands. That is all I want. This water's clear, semi-clear that I'm fishing, and these things really show up. I'm real surprised. I mean, it, this thing can't hide from itself, that's for sure. All right, two strands, just so it has a tiny bit of flash. Then I'll take some gray hair. Oh, cat, get off my lap. What are you doing, Gracie? Now, this stuff I should really put in a stacker. But I think what I'm going to do is pull this out, pull these fibers out. There we go. I just kind of lined it up a little bit. Now I'm going to put this on here. On top of the white. This is the very top of the fly. Gracie Mae, don't you get in my stuff. Gracie Mae uh, thumbs. She has an extra digit. So it looks like she has thumbs. She's got big feet. Sweet little cat. She was the runt of the bunch. I'm going to go over that a few times. I want this stuff to not flare up. I want it to lay flat over top of the fly, just like that. Now, I, that is how I like these clousers. J-Mo taught me that as far as when he builds a clouser, he builds these things so they lay flat. They do not flare out. Most of mine have always flared out. And it doesn't help nothing. Let me whip this. A good base. Give it a good whipping. And then what I like to do on my flies for the river. Now if I was fishing for white bass below Lake Somerville in the spillway, I would leave that fly just like it is. I wouldn't change it a bit. But this is Navasota River. And I like to give the fly a red belly and this thread will suck this red color up real nice in fact you can see it right there see how it's starting to get red red is also the first color that that uh, fades in the water column that is the first color to disappear, turns to gray. So that'll be a, a red belly, but as it gets down in depth, it disappears. It turns gray. It's got the tiniest bit of flash in it. I like to put just a little bit of super glue on the top of the fly, right on the threads. And I'm almost out of super glue. Matter of fact, I might be out of super glue. Oh lordy, it's stuck to the clip. Now, let's see if we got one more little. Oh, there it is. There we go. 
a little bit of super glue goes a long way especially when it comes to uh, clamping these things together oh my god I put it in this little magnetic holder it's got a little magnet on there so I can store it like this and stick it to the base of my lamp but obviously there are some problems with that Open this thing up. Anyway, we'll do that later. We got a little bit of super glue on there. And that's a finished fly. You know, if it looks about like the others. Comes through the water. Let me mash that stuff down. I constantly have super glue on my fingers. There you go. That is one good fly. That should be a good coyote I kind of started thinking about why this thing is named a coyote I didn't pick that name uh, I think it might have something to do with the jig that's called a road runner which this imitates but in a fly pattern the road runner is a heavy jig with a spinner underneath its jaw that's a little lesson for you. Okay, I hope you tie one. I hope you do as well as I'm doing with them. There's a big door. Could sacrifice this fly. Let's see. That is a big gar. Three and a half foot. I'll take a whack at it. Come get it, big boy. It'll be the end of this fly real quick like. Here he comes. <laughs> Here he comes. Let me see his tail. <laughs> oh, Lord. This would be way more than I can handle with this rig. There he is. Right in front of me. Right in front of me. Right in front of me. Coming up. Missed it. He is literally right in front of me. There he is, there he is, right in front of me. Golly, this thing is big. Look at that car. More like four foot. <laughs> I don't know how well you can see that. See, they're dancing around this thing. It's fun to play with them. It's a... Uh, Complete waste of a fly. There he is. Oh, he had to hold it. I can barely see that thing. He's gone clear to the other side now. He's moving along the other bank. He might have had enough of me messing with him. Or she. Probably a female. They get bigger. Wow. That would have been a tussle. Dragonfly. <laughs> oh Lord, that was cool. Rope fly. Get something with that gets stuck in their teeth, but doesn't actually hook them. But if you're gonna do that, you better have something more than a flimsy four weight. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do anything with that fish. It's likely to slap at this thing again. But it would hit a popper. God, that was a big fish. All right, we're gonna start working down to that other little draw there. Apparently, I need to let the fly get down deep. I wasn't even fishing. I was walking with the fly along the bottom, and there's the bass. That fish doesn't hardly fight at all. Nice little fish you go on. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, so that coyote's working. I think I just need to work it deeper. Probably need a longer leader. So that's what the coyote is. It's basically a clouser. It's just a clouser with a spinner blade attached to it. I should have done a better job of attaching the spinner blade. 
still still working on the engineering.